Well, amen. It's our prayer that the author of the Bible, the author and the finisher of our faith, it's our prayer today that you know him as your Lord and, and your Savior. And we've had technical difficulties. We've had clothes changes. And I do want to reiterate again, thank you to the ordination team uh, that put this together at last minute. Uh, thank you to the deacons for uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to change things. And, and so uh, this morning's different. Um, let's pray. Father, we love you and we thank you. God, we are grateful today that you are still the great I am. Lord, on the throne and in control. Lord, this preacher needs you this morning. God, we need you to hide me behind the cross. Lord, we need your anointing. Lord, if we've never, if we've ever needed a people not to hear a preacher this morning, it's today. We need them to hear from you, from your word. God, help us today not to say anything that wouldn't be pleasing. Lord, take from our mind right now, Lord, anything we want to say in the flesh. And Lord, have your will in your way in this service today. God, may you be glorified. May you be lifted up. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. We have been in our study in Judges for, for about 19 weeks, and we have one more week that's going to have to wait. Today I just feel led to, to go in a different direction based off of what we have seen this weekend uh, with the Olympics. And, uh, and some of you have already have said, Preacher, you need to be quiet about that. Well, the problem we have in America now, we've been quiet about that. And uh, out of love and compassion for, for, for the lost today, I'm going to preach the word. And... Uh, I believe Matthew 24 is, is a passage of Scripture that's preparing us for the coming of the Lord. And in that passage of Scripture, it says something about birth pains, birth labors. And, and the only thing that's left after the birth pains is for the baby to be born. Is that correct? Amen. So we don't need to be looking for signs and and, and all that stuff in our day, we just need to be waiting on the Lord to step out on the cloud and relieve those birth pains. Amen? But Matthew 24 tells us that these things have got to happen. These things are going to happen. And when you see these things happening, just know that these are the birth pains. These are the preparations for the things to come. And, and this morning, I want you to turn to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. And I want to read uh, just a couple of passages of scriptures there this morning. And, and I don't know if our AV team was able to get all these passages in the computer today or not. But if they didn't, it's not their fault. It's mine. I give them a laundry list of scripture this morning, a whole notepad full of scripture. Uh, and told them if they were able to put it up on the screen. But if not, it's okay. Because this morning I'm going to give you Bible. And, uh, and, and a few comments and not many of my own. But we're living, I believe, in the last days. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3, if you would stand uh, for the reading of God's Word. Verse 1, the second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the com uh, commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Here it is. Knowing first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. Now, this passage of Scripture is, is, is talking about people making fun of the Lord not coming back yet. But at the same time, it says they were mocking following after their own lust. First, uh, not first Jude, Jude 1, 18. Jude 18 says this, how that they, that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time. 
who should walk after their own ungodly lust. Father, bless the reading of your word. Oh, Lord, we love you this morning. Now, God, we need you. Hide us behind the cross. Anoint us. God, may we hear from you today. May you be lifted up and glorified. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You may be seated. As we were watching in, in this, um, uh, TV and all that stuff this weekend, we have seen that, that the Lord's Supper has been mocked at the Olympics. Now, there's some people in here that says, oh, that was just a Greek god that they were representing. My friend, it was pretty obvious to me that they were depicting the Lord's Supper. And it was pretty clear to me that it was a bunch of somethings dressed up like women. And if it was just a, the representation of a Greek god, why must they have a child at this table? My friend, it's more than that. It's a, it's, a, it's a strike to the church. It's a strike to Almighty God. It's a, it's a mockery unto him today. I don't care how you cut it, okay? If it was a Greek God, the church, listen, I saw the Lord's Supper table there. I, I saw what I saw, okay? You see what you see. I saw what I saw. And if it was a Greek God, church, we don't worship a Greek God. We worship the one true God, Jehovah. Amen? And I'm telling you today, they, they tell us Christians, listen, y'all overreacting, y'all. Y'all should show love and compassion. Well, I'm going to preach you the Bible today and show you love and compassion. It has nothing to do with love. It has nothing to do with compassion. It has to do with in the last days these things are going to happen. They say, well, they're just acting like lost people should act. You're exactly right. That's how lost people will act. And this morning, I'm going to act like a Christian should act. And when we see somebody mocking Jesus, it should disturb us real bad. Amen. Hey, listen, we become, we become soft and we become callous in our day of sin. And I'm telling you, church, we need in these last days to stand for love. But we need to do it with love and we need to do it with compassion. But we must stand in these last days. Now I'll just go ahead and tell you. We're not going to fill this building up. Preaching the word. Because it ain't popular. It ain't. Matter of fact I had to delete some comments off of our Facebook post last night. That was talking about my comment. Listen. I, it, this stuff bothers me. If it don't bother you as a Christian, then you need to do some soul searching this morning that when they mock the one who went to a cross for you, it should bother you deeply. So this morning, I just want to give you some thoughts that as I went to eat with the Sunday school class last night, when I come home, I, I just sat down in my recliner and began to write some words down and, and look up scripture. And, and that's all I got for you today. No fancy outline, no fan, but I got a few words for you this morning. If I had a title this morning, it would simply be the times. The times. And we see right here in this passage of Scripture, uh, in, in a bunch of passages of Scripture this morning, in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. We see some disturbing times. Would you agree that the times we're living in are disturbing? Man, this, I, I, this weekend has been disturbing to me. What we've been seeing going on in our society is disturbing to me. We live in a day like I've never seen in my entire life. It's disturbing, and it should disturb you as a Christian. We live in disturbing times. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5 says, And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And, and this is all the way back in Genesis. That it was wicked, and that man was uh, wickedness was of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Well, hello, has that not magnified in our day? Amen. Amen. That the wickedness is abundant, and that it's running rapid in our day. And don't you know if Jesus, if it repented Jesus in Genesis chapter six and verse five that He made man? Don't you know he's looking down from heaven today going, my soul, what have they turned into? Wickedness everywhere. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. In the Bible it says, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Perilous times shall come. 
Don't you know we're there? Man, we're living in some dangerous days. We're living in days uh, that are perilous. And, and Tim Paul's talking to Timothy and telling Timothy, Timothy, when you, when you uh, listen, in the last days when, when you're preaching the word, it's going to be dangerous. You know what, church? It's going to be dangerous for us to stand in this pulpit and proclaim the whole counsel of the word of God. It's going to be dangerous to go out there in the streets and share the gospel with a lost and dying world. Why? Because we're showing them love by telling them there's a God that loves them and there's a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. That's not hate speech, my friend. That's the love of God that sent a Savior to die for you. And that's what we're to do, but it's going to be dangerous in the last days uh, to do that. If you go read 2 Timothy chapter 3, it goes down the list, and men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Hello, Tokyo. Truth breakers, false accusers, incont incontinent, furious, uh, despisers of, of um, those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of the God, but denying the power thereof for such turn away. That's the last days, my friend. Everything we just read was like getting on social media and seeing the news. It's happening in our day, what we just read out of God's Word that Paul was writing to Timothy. In Luke chapter 17, verses 26 through 29, we're talking about disturbing days, disturbing times, and as it was in the days of Noah. What was going on in the days of Noah? People were drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, going along with their happy old selves after they'd been warned that there's a rain coming, there's a flood coming, God's going to send a rain and flood the earth, get right, amen? There's a day coming. They were living wickedly, they were living how they wanted to and just living life however they pleased. They were warned. Listen, we're to be warning people in our disturbing days that Jesus is coming. What else did he say? They did eat and drink, and they were married wise, and they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. And likewise, disturbing days, also were in the days of Lot. They did eat and drink, and they were bought, and they sold, and they planted, and they built. But the same day that Lot went in out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus... Shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed? What kind of days was it? It was disturbing days. It was enough to make, in, in Noah's day, it was enough to make God want to destroy the earth with a flood. In Lot's day, it was enough to make God want to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of the wickedness uh, that was going on in that day. In the day in which we live, it makes God angry and upset that he sees what's going on in our day. And honey, one day this place is going to burn up and be destroyed because of the wickedness. As it was in the days of Lot and in the days of Noah, what was it? It was disturbing days, wicked days. What else do we see in our day, in our times? We see deceptive days. Not only do we see disturbing days, but we see deceptive days. 1 John 4, 1 through 3. But beloved, believe not every spirit. Huh? <laughs> you better be careful what you believe. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world, whereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, uh, flesh is of God. But every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of the Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and that even now already is in the world. That's in 1 John, when 1 John was written. And can I promise you that the spirit of the Antichrist has not left and departed? I didn't say that we seen the Antichrist. I didn't say that we laid eyes on him. But the spirit of the Antichrist is in this world today. 
How do I know that? Because of what we've seen in a, in a mockery of the Lord's Supper. That is anti-God. I don't care how you spin it. Anti-God. Galatians chapter 6. Let me say before I move on, talking about the days of Lot. They tried to steal the, the rainbow. Huh? Can I announce to the world and to the church today that that's still God's promise? <laughs> uh, and now they're trying to steal the Lord's Supper. But can I say to the world today that that's still God's body that was broken and that was sacrificed for the sins of the world? Listen, you can't steal what God's gave the church. But you can mock it, and that's what the Bible says is going to happen. Galatians 6, 6 verse 7. We're talking about deceiving days. I believe there's some warnings to us as a church about deceiving days. Galatians 6, 7 says, be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Hmm? Now, if you sow tomatoes, you're going to reap tomatoes, and the deer's going to enjoy them. If you sow a pear tree, you're going to reap a pear tree. If you sow an orange tree, you're going to reap an orange tree. But let's break it down spiritually for us real quick. Listen, if you go out and you sow sin, and you, you, you sow sin, and you sow sin, honey, there ain't nothing else but to reap sin. You're going to reap damnation upon your life if you sow sin. You're going to reap what you sow. The Bible says, be sure your sins will find you out. John MacArthur says this, the Christian has only two fields in which he can sow. That of his own flesh and that of the Spirit. Paul adds a warning here. God is not mocked. Regardless, listen, regardless of who you are, you reap what you sow. The world's going to reap what they're sowing. Christians are going to reap what they're sowing. It don't matter who you are. The Bible declares that you're going to reap what you sow. God will not be mocked. Regardless of who you are, your sins are going to find you out. Paul says other places in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 15, that their destiny will be according to their works. Amen? If you love the Lord today and you serve the Lord today, then, then your destiny is heaven. If you serve the father of lies today, Satan, the father of deception, confusion, chaos, then your destiny is hell. Honey, there ain't no other way to spin it. There's heaven and there's hell. There's a broad way that leads to hell and there's a narrow way that leads to heaven. And I tell you what, that road's narrow, but Greg, I would rather be on the narrow road than I had the wide road bending in with the, blending in with the corruption of this day. I don't want any part of it. Appalachian Baptist Church, we don't want any part of it. And as far as I'm concerned, there be no wickedness and worldly stuff in this church because we are serving God and God Almighty alone. Amen. Amen. Preacher, are you mad? No, I'm heartbroken. Preacher, are you mad? It sure does sound, no, 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 hear me. I'm a born-again Christian that my Savior died for on the cross. And it breaks my heart to see him mocked. Breaks my heart to see him mocked. I love the Lord today with all of my heart, with all of my soul, and with all of my might. And I want to see him lifted up. I want to see much made of Jesus. I want to see us make much of Jesus. Hey, listen, we, I think we've tried to smother out and say uh, and apologize for, for being Christians today. I'm not apologizing for being a Christian today. Amen. I'm born again. And the Bible says in John chapter 3, ye must be born again. Amen. And I love the Lord. I hope you do today. We must be, but we're living in deceptive days. Galatians 6, 8 says that if you reap of the Spirit, then you sow of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall inherit the king, shall not inherit the kingdom of God? 
What does he say next? Be not deceived. Don't be deceived. What does he mean? Well, he gives us a list. He says, don't run around here sowing of the wicked spirit and evil and expect that you're going to inherit the kingdom of God. Don't think that you can go out here and live any kind of way you want to in these days and expect that you're going to get to go to heaven and God's going to look at you, Sheree, and say, oh, well, bless your little heart, honey. You didn't know any better. Well, bless your little heart. Your preacher's telling you today that you can't live any kind of way you want to. You must be born again. Or else you're going to reap. He says, be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, or adulterers, nor infeminate, or abusers of themselves with mankind. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But listen to this. And such were, past tense, some of you. But, <laughs> whoopee, you are washed you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I like that word, don't you? I like that bud in there. I, that means I, I ain't that way anymore. That means I get to inherit the kingdom of God. That means I get to go where Jesus is. And the last time I checked, it ain't like that over there. Amen. It ain't like it is down here over there. For there shall not be any sin in heaven. All the sin is gone. All that's there is his righteousness and praising a Jehovah God for all of eternity. And I'm telling you church, strap on the battle gear. I'm telling you put on the whole armor of God. I'm telling you suit up because uh, the battle's on. It's intensifying. It's getting deep. Hey listen the rally call has been made. The church of the living God must be ready to fight. Preacher, are you serious? Yes, with all of my heart. I went in to Columbia, South Carolina, Tony, and I wrote my name on a, on, a, on a blind and said, I promise to defend the United States of America no matter what happens. I'll fight. I will not leave you on the battlefield. I will not leave you in a, in a foxhole. I'll fight for you, and I'll go anywhere I have to to defend the United States of America. But, honey, there was a man that died on the cross that shed his love for me, and I promise you I'm going to tell this world that Jesus loves them. Why? Because I don't want anybody to die and to go to hell. Jude also tells us, listen, to contend for the faith and snatch them from the fire. Amen. Amen. Not only do we see disturbing times and deceptive times, but we see departing times. Second Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 through 5 says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at the appearing of his kingdom, preach the word, and be instant in season and out of season, reprove, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Why? Why are we preaching what we're preaching today? Why are we doing what we're doing today? Because we've been instructed to preach the word. And Paul says, this is why you're going to preach the word, Timothy, for a time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching, itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things endure affliction, do the work of the evangelist, and make proof of thy ministry. <laughs> There's going to be a, a departing. There are going to be those who don't want to hear the truth. Those who want somebody to scratch their back, clean their toenails out, and tell them, honey, you're going to be all right. Well, I'm going to tell you, the only way, you, you might get tired of hearing the gospel this morning, but I'm going to tell you, Jesus loves you. And the only way that you can escape damnation is come to him in a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. Denying times. We've disturbing times, deceptive, departing. But we're living in a denying time. Amen. Titus chapter 2 and verse 12 says, 
teach us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. In that day, hey, listen, Paul was telling Titus, you live this way in your day. For us today, he's telling us in our day to, to listen, deny the ungodliness and deny the worldly lust. Deny those things that we should live soberly and righteously and godly in our day. In this disturbing, wicked, departing, denying day, you and I are to live righteously. But what we're seeing in our day is Christians, all oh, you, they're saying, oh, preacher, you simmer down a little bit. You say, oh, no, 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 honey. I'm not simmering down. With the power of the Holy Spirit, we're going to continue to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Listen, we got to stop denying. We got to stop being told. That we can't have a voice. Amen. Titus 1.16 says that they profess that they know God, but in the works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient unto every good work reprobate. Church, every passage of scripture I've read you so far this morning has described our times. It's sad. It's sad. It should break our heart. It should hurt us deeply. But can I give you some good news today? Not only is there a departing time, a disturbing time, a div but also this morning, not only is there a, is a departing time and a denying time, can I tell us this morning that there is a divine time? Amen. Amen. He didn't leave us without hope. He didn't leave us to, to dread what we're going to face. He's, God is still in control in 2024. God is still on the throne. Last time I called up heaven in my prayer, I got an answer from heaven. Hey, listen, God is still on the throne. He will not be dethroned. He will not be kicked off. He is ever reigning in heaven and will continue to reign forever and forever and forever. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star. Honey, he is everything we could ever imagine. He's my protector, my provider. Listen, he's everything I've ever needed. He is my Lord and my Savior, my comfort in my peace this morning. He is still on the throne. John 16, 33 says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in ye, in me, ye might have peace. In the world ye might have tribulation. Hello. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. <laughs> What's that mean, Ricky? It means he's still in control. That means he's still, he's still the great I am. He's still the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the author and the finisher of my faith. He's still there today, amen? And he's still in control. Not one time has Jesus, has God ever woke up and, and wrung his hands in worry. Not one time has he ever looked down and said, oh, no, I'm losing control. Not one time has he ever had to worry about the church because the church is his church and we're going up, amen. He said, listen, we will suffer persecution. We will suffer tribulation. We will suffer trouble. But be of good courage. He is in control. John 1, 4, 4 through 6. Ye are of God, little children. <laughs> Woo, amen. <laughs> Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Woo, they're having fun today mocking our Savior. They think it's real funny. And they're having a ball. But don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. One day every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that he is the Lord. Every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess that he is God. One day, amen, it's going to happen. Be not discouraged. 
He's already overcome the world. They are of the world. Thereof speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. Ye, he that knoweth God heareth us, and he that is not of God careth, uh, heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Church, you need to know today the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. You need to be able to discern the difference. You see, it's not a coincidence that that happened at the Olympics. Why did it happen at the Olympics? Because the world is watching. Huh? The world is watching. Oh, yeah, let's mock Jesus in front of the whole world. Let's mock Jesus in front of the whole world. I've been wearing a bracelet, and I ain't funny money. I just like this bracelet. It's from a guy's funeral in Union the other day. And it's got some colors on it. <laughs> Whew. You know what the black stands for, right? We were dirty and rotten and sinful in need of a Savior. This is the invitation. I got some more, but this is the invitation. Stephanie, come on. Black stands for sin. That's us, wretchedness, lost, in need of a Savior. Oh, but there's a red on here. Stands for the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed because, listen, we were in need of a Savior because we were wretched and we were lost and we were going to hell. Oh, there's a blue on here. What does the blue stand for? You see, there's something called repentance. What is repentance? Oh, I'm going this way, following the devil, following Satan, and repentance is this right here. Now I'm following Jesus. And I'm going in a different direction. Amen. Everybody in here that's been born again and saved knows about repentance. Amen. Because we turned direction, didn't we, guys? We turned direction, and now we're headed in a different direction. Amen. That's repentance. That's what the blue stands for. Oh, but there's a white on here. <laughs> Woo! And you already know what's coming, don't you? He's the only one that can take a black heart, dip it in white blood, and make it white as snow. Yeah. Because that's purity. You know what that means? I'm no longer living in sin because the blood has covered me and I've, been, I've repented of my sins. Now I am turning and I am living a pure life for Jesus Christ. But then there's a green on here. There's green on here. Oh, and that ain't standing for green pastures, amen. No, no. That's because I was over here lost. The blood covered me. I repented and I'm pure and now I'm growing in Christ. Amen. I'm continually growing. I'm continually walking with him and, and learning about him and growing in his knowledge. But finally, there's a yellow. <laughs> Amen. But when I was over here in the black, I was still lost and headed for a devil's hell. But now that all these things in between has happened, I get to go to heaven when I die. That's salvation, my friend. That is salvation. You must turn from your sins and repent. One last verse, and I'm done. If you would stand this morning, we're going to have an invitation before we have Lord's Supper. Luke 18, 8 says this. I tell you that he will avenge speedily. He will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, Shall he find faith on the earth? When Lot was in Sodom, he begged, Lord, don't destroy them. And man, it got all the way down to a few, didn't it? Because he couldn't find righteousness in the land of Sodom. Man, if we didn't, if the Bible didn't tell us that Lot was a righteous man, we wouldn't know that Lot was a righteous man. He says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And vengeance is coming upon this earth. And when he returns, when Jesus steps out on the cloud, when he looks down from heaven, will he find the church faithful? 
Will he find us faithful? I encourage you today, church, to examine your hearts. We're about to take of the Lord's Supper. We shouldn't take of it without, with, conf, without, with, with, conf, with sin in our life so that we don't drink dam, that damnation upon ourselves. We should be, we should pray, get those things under blood, repentance. Amen. This is a holy, this is, this is one of the holiest, most sacred things that we do in the church. Now, this, this bread is, is oyster crackers. It ain't the body of Christ. It ain't going to turn into the body of Christ. But it represents his body that was broken, that was beaten, that was battered for you. This juice is not his blood, nor will it turn into his blood. But this juice represents the blood that he shed for everybody on this earth on Golgotha's hill on the cross. If you go to hell today, you're going over the blood in the body of Jesus Christ. If you go to hell today, you're going to choose to reject the one who sent his son to die for you. If you go to hell today, you're going over the prayers of this church because we love you enough to tell you that there's a God in heaven that sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for you. If you're here today and you're a Christian, say, Preacher, I don't know, man. I'm struggling. I understand. It's hard. It's tough. But we have a promise, don't we? Because we have prayed and received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he's going to walk through it with us, isn't he? The invitation is open today. Whatever your need is, if it's salvation, Jesus can save you. If it's, if it's repentance, Jesus is here to help you. If it's just coming to, a, to, to, to pray for our nation, the altars are open. Would you come?
observe the Lord's Supper at this time. Amen. So if our deacons would. Amen. 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 Yes. I'm going to ask uh, Wayne, if he would, to pray over the bread.
I would like to reiterate the importance of what we are representing here, uh, that Christ gave his body for us and shed his blood for us. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty seven says this, Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Let every person examine himself then and so eat the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. This is, not, <clears throat> this is why many of you are weak and ill and some have died. But if we judge ourselves truly, we, have not, um, we would not be judged. But when you are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. A few verses before that it says this in verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
also in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting verse 25, it says, In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. God bless you. <clears throat> Thank you for being here today. And... Uh, God's good. Amen. He's a good God. And when I was a kid, if you talked about my daddy, me and you going to fight. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? And they've talked about our Heavenly Father. Amen. And I'm going to fight. Amen. And I'm going to love him for what he did for us. Amen? Amen. Pastor Ron. Amen. Uh, in the bulletin, there was a list of deacons uh, that were going to be voted on next week. Uh, there's uh, been a change, and we need to add one name to that list that uh, he was asked and then prayed and reconsidered, and had, he wants to be added back to the list to serve as deacon, and that's Roger Ware. Uh, so uh, his name is not in the bulletin, but if you would add his name to that list and be praying uh, for that this week, I uh, just want to make you aware of that. And then this coming Sunday, coming up, August the 4th, will be deacon election, and those uh, four names that are in the bulletin will be the four deacons that are, are to be uh, voted for in the election uh, coming up next Sunday. So God bless you. See you tonight at 6. Don't forget, if you are a senior adult and want to go to a senior adult VBS, please sign up on the sign-up sheet so we can get an accurate number of how many to be here. And I think we got a, a good week of study for you. We're going to be studying the, the Beatitudes. And uh, we're going to, Ricky Perry is going to start off the week, and then um, Pastor Ryan, Pastor Butch, Pastor Tony, uh, um, Pearson, and uh, myself have concluded the week. So that's what the week looks like. So uh, be praying for that. Please sign up for that. God bless you. See you tonight. Pastor Ryan. Let's pray. Father, we uh, thank you for the, the freedom, the ability to take the Lord's Supper. God, in so doing, we proclaim your death until you come again. And God, we look forward to your return. God, help us to be uh, at work. Um, God, with the work you've called us to do. God, in the proclamation of the gospel so that one more person can enter into life from crossover, from death to life. God, and I pray that each believer under the sound of my voice, no matter how long they've been a Christian, will continue to desire to grow in the maturity of their spirituality, to draw closer to you, to know you more. God, to be a better witness for the cause of Christ. God, help us all to walk in a manner worthy to the calling to which we've been called. Father, we thank you. Jesus, thank you for the cross. In Jesus' name, amen.